Welcome back. You know, I think Bobby Fischer that said chess is life. Many chess games, and this one especially included, is chess is very much like life. There's so many moving parts. There's so many things to watch out for. And ultimately, in the end, is winning. Winning in life. You make one little mistake sometimes, you can get away with it. But sometimes you, uh, the rule is you have to keep your guard up always. Always. Because you never know when you do something casually, it will kill you. And this is one of those instances. This is from round five of the 2024 Free Day Candidates. For those who don't know, this is the tournament that determines the challenger to the current world, world champion, Ding Lorin from China is between Al Reza Feroja, now flying under the French flag, and a Carl Nakamura, my personal favorite from the United States, is black. This is a long game, so I'm going to go through the beginning of it really quickly because there really is no point to get to the point I want to make. Well, what they're going to do, they're playing the Gucko piano, and you'll see what that is. Uh, we got E4. And we can go through pretty much standard stuff. The Gucko piano is, it seems simple, but it's incredibly complex in the different lines. And that's the one thing about chess is you move one piece, it opens up a tremendous amount of lines and that lines and it spreads like it, like a penny doubling itself and it becomes crazy to try to figure out. So that's why these guys study openings with very powerful computers. Queen B3, castles. This is all standard stuff. Small advantage for white. Pawn, knight comes over. Now, without the queen being here, without the queen being here, this knight can be here because there's no discovery attack from the queen to the knight. Before, white decides to lock it up a little bit more. Doesn't want to really take. Doesn't want to make his isolated A pawn, and the rook would be after it, and it would be a target. Knight goes to F4, the place it really wanted to go to before. Actually, a good spot for that knight, too, if it has to, is to come back here. Then if bishop takes, bishop takes, and black gets to develop a piece for basically free. They call that a tempo. You pick up an extra move because white will have to move its queen. Ferocia goes g3 to chase off the knight. And then you push the pawn. Now... There's many choices here. The computer likes knight to h3. It's okay. I'm not thrilled with it. It kind of hems up white a little bit and stops white from castling because if the knight goes here, the knight's guarding this space and the king can't castle. But he decides to go d5, hit the bishop. What to do, what to do. And I got the computer on off screen. And the number one move, by pretty much by far, is G takes. And then pawn takes knight, pawn takes bishop. And it goes on from there. Then the knight takes the pawn on C4. And queen goes to D5. And the game continues. He decided not to do that. He betrayed the bishop. Back to F1. Now, that went from about a half a pawn advantage for white to just a small advantage for black. Maybe he was thinking about rerouting the bishop here or even here down the road. Knight E6, which is really wanted him. That's a good spot for that knight. 
there isn't any pawns right now that can harass him on the F file. Bishop G2. He rerouted the bishop. C6. Carl decided he's got to start developing his pieces. His entire queen side isn't developed yet. White castles. Knight to D7. Now, if you notice a lot of these top games, unlike amateur players like us, are very low rated. I'm just, just almost 1,600 rated. You see pawns or pieces attacking each other or pawns attacking each other. Most of the weaker players, I shouldn't say weaker, but amateur players will automatically take. What they do here is what they call leaving the tension. The tension between these two. They just leave it there. White can take, black can take, but you want to take when it's to your advantage, your best advantage. Bishop goes to B2, get the other bishop developed and, and connect your rooks. Knight, this is a very crowded game. There's only two pawns missing on the entire board and we're on move 18. Now I want to give you the time controls it's 40 moves in two hours, and the second time control adds 30 minutes. But the caveat is, the difference is, the 40 moves in two hours has no increment. Zero increment and zero delay. Increment is every time you move and hit your clock, it adds time on your clock. In this tournament, there is no increment or delay on the clock. But you do get a 30-second increment on move 41. You get a half an hour more, plus a increment. So you've got to use your time very wisely because of the fact that you don't get any extra. And Ferruja gets in some time troubles you're going, to, you're going to see later in the game. Let's just go through this a little bit. Because it's a long game. I can't go through all of this, and people wouldn't really want to. And that's interesting how he would guard that knight. Why wouldn't he just move the other knight? I don't know, but that knight's in a good spot. So Carl figures, what the hell, I'll do that. Can technically he be harassed by the bishop? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is that Carl would just go here. And that bishop would have moved for nothing, and black would pick up a tempo. Tempo being an extra move. It's like giving your opponent two moves in a row. Finally... Pawn takes, bishop takes, because that knight's in a really good spot. Queen b5, hitting the rook. Queen goes to c7. Well, black hasn't developed his late squared bishop yet, and white's got some pretty good power with double rooks on the on the uh, queen side. But according to the computer, it's just a small half a point, half a point advantage, half a pawn advantage for black. Rook goes to c1, decided to put the rook on the same file as the black queen. So Carl moves the queen. Queen to e2, gets the heck out of dodge, uh, goes somewhere else so the queen can do some more good. Bishop d7, finally the bishop is in the game. Bishop here, now black is threatening to take the rook for free. Knight has to go to c4. Now, if you notice, that's a good spot for that knight because of the fact there's no pawns here to harass it. Now, should knight take? Queen takes? I don't know. I wouldn't. It would open it up too much, and Ferruja doesn't do that. He goes knight b3 to hit the dark squared bishop. Bishop just comes back. Rook d1. Queen A8. Just to get the queen out of there. To do better things. Bishop G2. It's kind of like you guys when you play chess. Is think of it this way. Uh, say you're on a hockey team. Or on a basketball team. And say uh, there's five men on each side. And you have one of your men sitting on the bench. You only have four. Well, that would be a terrible disadvantage, a five-on-four. That happens in hockey with a penalty. 
which means you have a tremendous disadvantage being one man down. Well, if you put pieces in, in, in places where they can't do anything, that piece might as well not be on the board and you're a piece down. And that's how that works. All pieces have to be doing something. Knight goes there. Knight finally takes. Bishop takes. Knight h4. Get that light squared bishop. Knight f6. Let's just go through a few moves here because I'm going to show you it's a really long game. And uh, if you want to watch the video, you can. Knight, bishop takes, pawn takes. Now, looks a pretty good pawn center that white has coming down on the black king. Queen, rook comes over. The reason why I'm going through this, it's a 60-odd move game, and we're on move 40 right now. Now, e6. Now, rule 41. That's where Ferozia picks up 30 minutes plus the time he had remaining, which was very little. He's in time trouble. Nakamura has been very good about using his time in this tournament, even though he's struggling a little bit. He has one loss and two draws. But queen takes. Rook takes. Queens are off the board. Knight f6. What to do, what to do. Now, why? Pawn takes, pawn, check. King just takes, so you don't lose it. So just leave that pawn there. Leave the tension. Rook d4, going after some isolated pawns. King f8, get the king over there so we can guard the checking square. Rook comes back. They're just trying to maneuver around now. King Rook b2, rook comes over, bishop, here comes the knight. Material-wise, it's a bishop for a knight, material's even. Let's go, let's go through everything here, because like I said, it's a long game. Right now, it's a small advantage for black. But I want to show you at the end why letting your guard down, even for a moment, is fatal. Knight here. Pawn checks, king takes, checks. Now he's thinking, I can win this. I can, I can queen that pawn. But no, you block with the rook. Rook takes, king takes, e7. The pawn is marching down. It's one square away from being a queen. And there's also a light squared bishop. They come over here and guard the queening square. What to do, what to do. Knight takes, of course. Queens. Now, what Akaro has done is he's given up the exchange. So you have a knight and two pawns against a rook and two pawns. Now, according to the computer, this is basically drawn. And we're on move 58. And Ferocious time is starting to click down. Now, he is picking up 30 seconds of move. So he just moves the king a couple times. You can pick up a minute. Knight to f4. Now what Carl's trying to do is he's trying to get this d-pawn to march down the board in queen. That's his goal. King f1. Here comes the king over to stop it. Pawn goes to d3. King f2. Everything's beautiful. He has to give up that pawn, and he, and he does. Check. King goes to e3. He gave up that pawn to get the king closer. g4. What to do, what to do. Right now, the game, the first four moves the computer suggests are all 0, 0.00. This is dead drawn. Stop the video, and it's white's move. What would you do as white? I think all of us, all of us would play king takes pawn. Now, these guys are the top players in the world, literally. Carl was third in the world, classical, right at 27.89, and uh, Al Jira Ferozzi is 27.60, just behind him. And Ferozzi is a lot younger than Carl by a good 10 years plus. Think about this for a minute. Make your decision. You want to march this pawn down. Here, here. 
want to keep marching. The white king wants to take the black pawn. But in order to stop that pawn, the rook's got to come over and take the pawn here on this square. But here's the problem. When the rook takes the pawn, this comes here and forks the king and the rook. And Frozier doesn't see that till the last minute and plays king takes d3. And it went from 0, 0.00 to a 9.11 point advantage now plus for a Carl. That one simple mistake. He, he's playing hard, playing hard, playing hard, playing hard. And he let down your guard for just one second. And it costs you everything. And, of course, a Carl pushes the pawn, checks, king e6, and that's where Ferozia resigned. You say, well, why did he resign? Well, let's play it out. We know this rook has to stop this pawn. There's no question. But when the pawn gets pushed, like I said here, this knight's going to swing over and win it. So what is he going to do? What can you do? All right, say so he says the heck with it. Play there. Of course, you play the pawn knowing he can't take because the knight goes here, check, and you lose the rook for free. So what do you do? You queen it. Well, it's White's move, actually. So let's just, let's just do this. He goes here. Rook goes back. Black queens. Rook takes. Knight takes. And the game is over. By the time the white king can get over here and get the black pawn, this pawn is going to queen. And with a knight and a queen against the rook pawn, and plus the fact that slowly but surely the black king can creep over and help as well. The game is over. Actually, the computer shows mate in 16, but the game is over. And that's why Ferruja resigned. So let's go back here. Here we are. Sorry about all my arrows. But this game is dead drawn 0, 0.00 with four different moves. And Ferroja let his guard down for one minute and played king takes. As all of us would have done. And it cost him. Just goes to show you have to always keep your guard up. He was thinking to himself, this is dead drawn. I can relax. I don't have to be as tense and have so much concentration. I know as a super grandmaster, one of the top players in the world, this is drawn. So I can take that pawn without thinking. And it cost him everything. It's amazing. What he should have done instead? Probably rook to d8, rook a8. But he didn't. And there you have the losing move. So Carl wins. He has two full points now. We're going to have to see how he does. Uh, Carl and Carl Juana were the two favorites. And nobody really gave Neponacci the... Uh, the former world champion that has won two candidates in a row now, trying for his third. He won the championship, and then he lost the championship. So he's going to try to win the candidates again to get in. And Nipponacci now has, I believe, three and a half or four points out of five. So Carl's got his work cut out for him. But it's early yet. There's 14 rounds. There's nine games to go. But Carl's going to have to get his shit together. I know he seems like he doesn't care, and he's a casual player. He cares deeply. Uh, Magnus Carlsen, a former world champion, maybe the best player in my lifetime, Kasparov and, and, and Magnus Carlsen, the two best players in my lifetime, not include Fisher in that group, said Caruana and Nakamura have the best chance of winning this candidate's tournament. And he also said this is Nakamura's best chance to win it. And Magnus is a really good judge of player strength and character. And he tells it like it is, and he doesn't mince words. 
So, a Carl got one. You just keep the heat up, and if they can't handle it, they let their guard down just for a moment. Chess is just like life. One simple mistake can cost you everything. Until the next time, I appreciate y'all. God bless, goodbye, and good luck.